Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Short Explanation Podcast. My name is Hi. I'm Tom. Is now back to the other square. Yeah. So, Tom, do you remember that that show, Hollywood Squares? The name sounds familiar. I don't think I ever watched it. So you had a guy in the middle, and mm. and this is me. I'm also too old. I am too old for the. To, I'm in that middle ground, and you had celebrities around the boxes. Yeah, but yeah. I, I feel like that's what we're doing. We need to just like add a bunch of boxes of our like other shows and stuff around us just to serve as a, a distraction while people watch. Yes. So anyway, this is episode seven, and we're going to talk about VPNs. But before we start, I would like to say, if you didn't listen to last week's episode with Tracy or Infosec Sherpa about the need for certificates, I thought it went really well. And I want to solicit um, a lot of people ask us, hey, we want to do interviews. So if you want to do interviews or you want more interviews, let us know. Let us know, not in the comments, message us. All right, you can do it. I think the YouTube comments work. You can join our Signal group. But please, let us know how if you want more interviews, less interviews, other things like that, because we want to bring that to you. And if you didn't hear it, I think it was an awesome show, and I want to continue with it. So so that was the little show there. But anyway, let's talk about VPNs. Let me. Tom's finishing his drink, but you want to start with us? Coffee. Uh, I probably shouldn't be having coffee at 9 p.m., but hey, here we are. Um, yeah, so we're we're going to talk about VPNs. Um, now, just, just to clear the air, we're not going to be making a VPN recommendation here uh, because we're not the experts on the lay of the land on what makes a great consumer VPN. Luckily for you, though, next week we are getting the expert in the lay of the land on consumer VPNs and, you know, which one you should use, shouldn't use, might use. Uh, so look forward to that. Uh, this is more of a general intro show of what is it, what things aren't VPNs, what are you going to use one for, do you really need one, and if you're a hardcore gamer, do you need your IP protected? Um, uh, here's the spoiler. No, you don't. Just no. But I like this format where we bring mm. you a topic. I think we did this now. Tw like we did this with, we talked about passwords and then we talked, then we talked about the last pass breach and then we brought you passwords. Here we have VPNs and then next week we're going to bring, we're going to bring the experts in. And I think I could get those lined up. And this, by the way, the same expert wrote a privacy opt out. Uh, so when we talk privacy and opting out of people database, her name's Yael. Yael will come on and and explain to us all that other stuff. Okay. So with that said, um, I guess I should. Tom's great at explaining this. What is a VPN? The simplest way I can explain a VPN is it's basically a way to take your network connection for your machine and put it somewhere else. So, you know, generally when you are on your machine, you reach out to a web page, like, you know, your computer talks to your router and your, your cable modem or whatever connects you to your ISP. And then it heads out to your ISP where, you know, it you're looking up DNS resolvers to figure out your website. By default, those come from your ISP, but you can set your own. A lot of people use like Cloudflare, Google, OpenDNS, whatever. Um, so once you do that resolution, you go out your ISP's pipe uh, to their gateway and you ask for websites. You ask for, you know, whatever data you're trying to get off the net or make whatever connection you want to make. What a VPN does is it basically puts everything you're asking for into this opaque tunnel. It's like a, you can literally just imagine it as a big tube. Um, and everything you ask for on the internet, if the VPN is built correctly, um, everything that your computer asks for goes through that tunnel. And the tunnel on the other side is connected to wherever your VPN endpoint is. And this is where things get a little murky because you can pay for one, right? I'm sure you've seen podcasts, you've seen YouTube videos, you know that everyone and their grandmother uh, is trying to pitch you on a commercial VPN solution. So you can go buy one and they provide the endpoints and, you know, for a low price every month, you get access to that end of the tunnel. Um, or you can set up your own. You can use something like a Raspberry Pi. A lot of routers have the VPN software built in to make that an endpoint. Now, like if you're home, you don't want to use a VPN to just go to your home router. You're just adding latency and extra steps. But let's say you're out at a hospital using public Wi-Fi and you want to 
not beyond public Wi-Fi, right? You don't really trust their endpoints. You don't trust that security, uh, but you've got stuff to browse. Maybe you want to, you know, check on online banking, which is, you know, safe using HTTPS anyway, but let's say you want that belt and suspenders protection. Uh, you can connect to your, your VPN that you host at your house, uh, and then everything on that connection that you're using from your device goes through that secure tunnel and pops out the other end at your home. At, at in like you know an endpoint that you trust more than the public network you're on, so that's kind of the the most basic uh, feature of a VPN is it takes your connection and it puts it somewhere else. And that somewhere else is going to be important a little later on. But the next thing is what isn't it? And so we talk about what it is, but. Tom's going to explain in a few minutes, but it's not this, this band-aid to hide you. So people want to think that, okay, if I'm, if I'm using a VPN, I am 100% safe because you've seen those sites. You have to use a VPN if you're going to do any of this. Otherwise, the big bad RIA or the MPAA or Netflix password sharing is going to come after you. And if you use a VPN, you are immune to these. And that's not what it is. It's just an encrypted tunnel that says at the end of the endpoint, that's where whomever thinks that you're coming from. And 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 you're gonna get into the point where everyone knows where that encrypted that encrypted tunnel comes from. So if they can tag back to you, you're not doing anything other than saying, hey, I'm also uh, obstructing the legality or whatever else I'm doing. Like if you're trying to watch some real Doctor Who on the BBC and the BBC gets wind that you're using a VPN, they may not be too happy with you. Am I explaining that right? Yeah, yeah. This is why VPNs are a constant cat and mouse game with service providers. So the BBC is is a perfect example um, because, like, where uh, something like Netflix, where if you're paying for an account, you know, you might not agree with the business decision of being locked out of other content that's available in other countries. That's a totally different show, and we're not going to get into it here. But the BBC, for people inside the United Kingdom who are paying taxes and funding the BBC, get access to all of that content for free. It's just, it's one of the perks of being a citizen of the United Kingdom. Um, but if you're an American, you don't necessarily get all of that access for free, right? Um, so a lot of people in the States will use a VPN to make their connection appear to be coming out of, uh, you know, a UK based IP address or block of IP addresses so they can watch the BBC for free. Um, and when the BBC figures this out, they, they, they block that IP, right? They're just like, oh, this is clearly shared. There's a bunch of people coming from this one IP address. This traffic does not look like normal household stuff. Um, we're just going to go ahead and block this. And then the VPN provider, you know, if that's the main thing that that node was used for, they've got to shut down and refresh somewhere else, bring up a new box, the new different IP, or just like, you know, redo some networking stuff um, to try to evade that ban. Uh, and if you have ever used commercial VPN service, you've probably seen a lot of this. Some sites working kind of weird your google searches popping up captchas to make you click on like sidewalks motorcycles stop signs and the like uh that's because vpns put you with a most commercial vpns put you with a bunch of different people on the same connection it's not like one box to one person uh one of the things that helps along this anonymity argument is it's you and you know like a thousand of your closest random internet friends all using the exact same endpoint IP address. So, you know, grandma's traffic on Facebook is going out the same pipes that somebody's using to illegally download movies, for instance. Oh, so, I mean, this is leading into, okay, so other than watching the BBC, do, uh, maybe illegally, maybe not illegally, whatever else, until they catch you and you move it, do we need a VPN? So... This is actually, here's a trivia question, the third time we've spoken about VPNs, uh, not necessarily on this show, but in our entirety, and things have changed. So we kind of used to say, yes, you should be behind a VPN, and you should, you want to obscure traffic, and that's the next topic, but 
do we really need one at this point? Tom hit on it really early. Uh, all the websites. So the idea was you don't want someone at a public coffee shop to snoop on your traffic. So you're making this encrypted tunnel and you trust the other endpoint a little bit better. So you're going to your banking site. You have that sort of more security, but your banking site has H H S T H S H T T P S and H S T S already turned on. Okay. So that's the little lock. And that says that your traffic to your bank is encrypted. So even on the public Wi-Fi, the 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 attacker or the people the people snooping your traffic will see that you're at Bank of America, Chase, wherever. But they won't know. They won't be able to get your password. They won't get it. So you're safe that way. So if you're safe going to HTTPS on all these sites and you're and and you like your locale, you're not trying to obscure where you're from to get BBC shows. What? are you doing because you're not hiding from anybody people know that you're coming from a vpn so you're not hiding from anybody so do you really need it the the complicated and honestly i i hate this answer but it it depends right so if you live in a location where your isp might be hazardous to you right uh, think of authoritarian regimes right and you want information on health um or uh, for your particular lifestyle like let's let's say you are gay and a people that is not lgbt friendly right um then being able to access these sites and communities and information and just talk to other people in your situation can be absolutely critical if you need to hide from your isp or from the people who control your your normal pipes to the internet uh, a vpn can be an incredibly freeing tool uh, now it's not the only tool you should have in your in your kit um, right relying on any one piece of security technology um, is just as fallible as anything else right that's why we have defense in depth that's why you have to have a lot of these things in a row you're right your bank using https and hsts like that keeps you really, really safe on the internet. Um, you know, do you need a VPN if you're doing online banking? No, especially if you trust your own pipes. No, not at all. Um, but do you want one? Like, if you're using public airport Wi-Fi, is it a bad idea to use a VPN to get to your online banking? Not necessarily, especially if you trust your VPN company or uh, if your VPN just goes back to your house on a line that you already trust. So there, there are still like good reasons to use a VPN, but a lot of the marketing and ad stuff around, oh, hey, if you're a real gamer and need to hide your IP address, like that's, you're only adding latency to your video games. Take it from, from a video game addict. Um, it, it's not going to help you. Um, if you're trying to hide your IP address, like because you're, connecting to things that would expose it and, and you know put yourself and your connection at risk from other people like finding it and, and trying to break into your stuff maybe but you have to be a pretty popular personality on the internet to have somebody look into that stuff that closely it's probably not worth it um yeah, I, I guess the, the answer is definitely it depends. But the general rubric I use is if you can trust your general ISP with that traffic, you probably don't need a commercial VPN solution. But if you're in a place where you can't or you're fearful of authorities, then yeah, it's not a bad idea. So I have a VPN that connects to my house, and we're going to talk about that later, um, specifically for work. So my work blocks... First, all commercial VPNs. My work is in the business of keeping keeping children safe. So they have to block uh, all these different things. Like, for example, WhatsApp used to be blocked. WhatsApp is innocuous. I mean, it was just that nobody in America uses WhatsApp. And so they said there's a box that says social networks, and they just check boxes. And when someone complains, they uncheck a box. Well, WhatsApp never got unchecked. So I couldn't use WhatsApp at school at work and i have no cell service in my building so the only way i can get stuff is on an internet so i have to in this case if i want to have any communication with the outside world i mean i i know you're shedding a tear for me but it's it's one of those things that i do that um do i am i worried specifically that they know that i'm on whatsapp not really or on facebook or whatever it is then they start blocking twitter then they start blocking Instagram. Then they start blocking, and you add the websites here. Like Spotify is blocked, but again, that's not for me. That's for others. I don't 
but it's one of those now that I connect home, I'm not doing it to to like to show them that I can beat them. I'm just connecting to my house so I have access. Like it was just an access thing. And so for me, that makes me happy. And I made my own and we'll give you recommendations later for that. But when I'm out and about, you know what? I trust, first I'm on data most of the time. I trust T-Mobile more than the free public Wi-Fi. But like you said, if I can't, it's, HTTPS is really strong and I, I am safe with that and I'm not too worried. Yeah, so there there are other things that aren't VPNs, but kind of accomplish the same thing. Uh, you've probably heard of proxies. Um, you know, proxies can be as simple as uh, clicking on, you know, uh, a, a cache link or a Google Translate link to a website, right? Because you're proxying through Google to get to that content. Um, that's That's a classic and it works in at least most of the educational institutions I grew up with, um, it, it could be changed now, but Google no, Translate is usually no, unblocked. No, they're smarter than that. They, okay. <laughs> they figured that out. Okay. <laughs> Glad to know the world is growing up with me. Um, but, uh, you know, other things like there are web-based proxies where you can type in an address and then hit enter, and it basically renders that web page inside of another one. It's basically just like a, a pretty poor redirect. Um, the main difference between like a proxy and a VPN uh, is a proxy is going to take, you know, one connection or a subset of connections and, and push them through to a different pipe, uh, like, you know, opening a web page inside of another web page. It's not going to do it for everything. It'll just do it for some things. Um, whereas a VPN is typically uh, a whole connection holistic system. Right. Um, you can set up things called like split tunnel VPNs where only some traffic goes out the VPN and the other stuff is left alone. And those have decent uh, efficacy. It's like if you have a company and you have important stuff behind the company firewall, but your pipes aren't big enough and you don't want to pay to like backhaul literally all of your employees web traffic when they're like watching YouTube and stuff. Cool. You can make a split tunnel proxy and say, okay, anything on our production network and stuff that people need to get to goes out the VPN. The other stuff can just go out their own Wi-Fi because we don't want to pay for it. Um, and that makes perfect sense to me. Um, Corporate VPNs are super popular and have been around forever. Um, basically, it just exists to let remote people get back uh, to the company and get inside the the firewall, whether you know virtual or uh, virtual or physical. Um, it allows them to get access to uh, those systems that are kind of you know behind the corporate security veil. What I like, and this is not this part of the show, but. Um... Uh, connecting to a work computer like like team like a team viewer remote desktop connection that's not the part of this show but i like that as as not the corporate vpn but using that like that um it's we i put this on here at the very end but private relay is almost like that proxy so if you need just a little different like you don't want people to, you don't want your isp to know exactly where you are you want to change some stuff up i know on ios if if you pay for even, I think the very basic uh, iCloud subscription, they give you something called p private relay, which which you can tell it to completely obscure your IP or have it in the general location or the general times when they have some settings there. So I do that and I, I have that on all the time. So it just puts me at different, different locations within, let's say in my case, New Jersey, which for me gives me that added sense. It's not really supposed to, it's not, it doesn't anonymize you in that way. It just, it hides you a little bit more. Google, if you paid for Google Fi had the, or if you pay for Google One, they have their own VPN, which routes it through the Google servers. Again, do you trust Google to do this right? And I'm not saying I don't trust Google. I do trust them to do it right. It's just, what are they doing on the backside, which I have no knowledge about. I'm assuming they're keeping you safe because that would be very bad if they didn't. But again, they your your phones also may have some sort of private type thing built in to just obscure some stuff if that's what you're trying to go for. And I, I do want to touch on 
uh, anonymity real quick, uh, because you will see a lot of VPNs, especially commercial VPNs that pay for very expensive commercials during very big sporting events. Uh, some of them might say, oh yeah, and you're totally anonymous and no one knows who you are on the net. Um, that is not true categorically. Um, it's not an outright lie, but there's a lot of nuance in that statement that they don't dig into. Yeah, big surprise, it's marketing. Um, so, with a VPN, uh, with a, a standard commercial VPN, um, if you're buying it and using that connection, um, even if they profess no logs, if the right types of law enforcement people come knocking, you will get found out if you have done something absolutely insane. Like, if you make a, a bomb threat or a threat of violence against a public figure on a VPN, you will not be protected by that VPN. I'm just going to say that out right now. When the right people get involved and the right law enforcement agencies come after you, there's not a lot that a private VPN corporation is going to do to protect you. Uh, they will 100% throw you under that bus. Um, so, you know, it... It does obfuscate you a little bit because your traffic is being thrown in with a bunch of people's traffic, even if they say, you know, we don't keep logs or anything else. They have to keep a list of people they're doing business with, right? So, hey, did you pay by credit card? Maybe PayPal, right? Maybe you paid with a bank account. Did you write them a check? Um, now, a lot of VPNs will take things like, you know, more anonymized cryptocurrencies, but we've even seen in the modern era that, you know, Bitcoin, fairly easy to track. Some other cryptocurrencies are less so, um, but, you know, if, if you're among the small percentage of users who are paying uh, with a cryptocurrency, well, you kind of, you didn't exactly de-anonymize yourself, but you made that haystack way smaller. And you you are you are one needle in a very small haystack. If you're so sending money from Coinbase, yeah. uh, Coinbase knows who you are. Yeah. So unless you're doing cold wallet transfer and it didn't touch anything and everything else, that's a different story. But if you're sending from FTX or Coinbase or wherever the big exchanges are these days, you are found out. That is yeah. not yeah. They they know where you are. Um. So. You know, it's it's important that you keep that in mind. Um, you know, a VPN is going to be a different IP address than your home network, sure. Uh, but it doesn't mean that you can't be tied back to the account because that is categorically false, especially if you enable a VPN and then you go log into your Facebook account or your Google account or your Apple account or your bank or whatever account, right? If you de-anonymize yourself on that VPN connection, will they know, oh, hey, you know, Tom logged on to Facebook on this VPN connection. Clearly, Tom has, you know, this IP address at his house, and he's using this IP address through this VPN connector. So now we know that Tom uses a VPN, and we know who he's paying. Um, it can be a problem if you're trying to stay anonymous and somebody uses something the wrong way. So you have to be careful. And so it's, so then let's ask the next question. Are they safe? Such a loaded question, right? It depends. It depends, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it depends. depends. Like, do you, it, it's, it, there's a whole lot of trust in here. So mm. are the protocols safe? Yes. I would say that yeah. OpenVPN and WireGuard, which we'll talk about, they're safe. If, yeah. if, if done right, they're safe. Now the question is, are they done right? And next week we will have the expert on <laughs> to tell us what she thinks was done right. Yeah. And, and again, it's one author's view of this who's done all the hard work. And again, the reason we're not making a recommendation is because next week we may find out that they said no logs and then really they're doing logs or they get raided or the Bitcoin wallet wasn't exactly as anonymous as they said. And we've we've seen that happen. Or mm -hmm. they 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 forgot to flip a switch and the log file, there's no log files, but the 
but there are log files anyway. So or maybe are they their machines got compromised with malware and it was it wasn't found for a period of months, which by the way is an actual news story that happened. So beyond trusting just your pipes to your ISP, like your inside your home network connection and then all the way out to your ISP, instead of just trusting that link in the chain, you're now adding all of the links of another company that will gladly take your money, but doesn't necessarily have your best interest at heart. Um, you have to keep this in mind. And if you're saying, oh my God, this is so complicated. Why would I even bother? I get it. I, I honestly get it. And for me personally, other than the VPNs I set up like myself at my own house for that public Wi-Fi situation as rare as it is, I, that's kind of why I don't pay anyone. I mean, it's, you want to, some of these offer lifetime subscriptions for 40 bucks. I have one of those lifetime subscriptions for 40 bucks and I have no expectation of anything. But like I said, it, it has a really spiffy interface. It will connect you wherever in the world you want to be. And if you want to do something, I mean, you want to hide that. If you want to, if your threat model is hiding from your neighbor, like, you, you you don't want someone who may be sniffing at the coffee shop with their Wi-Fi pineapple to see what you're doing. That that's great. Fine, go go do that. That's great. Uh, if you're trying to hide from somebody who's actually after you, that's a different story. And so again, it keeps on going back to what we keep on saying this. What is your threat model? And and so if the question is, should I spend? If I'm going to spend some money, let's go through this guide next week and see it. But what? I think we're going to spend the next few minutes explaining is maybe you want to make this yourself. It is really, really easy to do. And so we're going to offer you two options. One's the harder one. That's one line of code. And the other one is just a couple of clicks and you're set up. So the first one and is pyvpn.io. You go to the website. It allows you to put this on a Raspbian, um, Raspbian is Debian, I think it is, Debian system, which which if you have an old computer, you can just do it. If you have a Raspberry Pi, which are still incredibly difficult to get, but they're not impossible, you can do it. You can open up a, a, a Cloud VPS account and do the same thing if you want, which is probably even better because you can rotate the IPs there every so often. But they PyVPN.io walks you through. It's one curl command, and we're going to disclaimer that with don't just randomly paste curl commands that pull website into your into your terminal. But they literally go through every single step. So they say, we know that you shouldn't do this, but this is what it's going to do. Your first step, it's going to pull the Git repo. You want to go see it? It's there. Then it's going to say, okay, we are now installing the software. Are you okay with it? And it says, this is what we're installing. Here's the Git repo for that like it walks you through and then at the end it shows you everything and it takes like no joke like 30 minutes to do and in 30 minutes you can have a working vpn uh, i would say that the forums are not great but you know what is great our signal group we can help you walk you through if you have problems and i will tell you nine times out of ten it's dns it's always DNS. That's the problem. I've had so many DNS issues. But another thing, you can say, and on PyVPN, you can segment it. You can say this is the IP, and you can segment it off that this is only VPN traffic. Or, and we didn't talk about this, if you want to be on your network because you want to access server side stuff, this will allow you to do that as well. So let me let's. Let, Tom's like Tom has his jazz hands up. If you're watching the video. The main thing I use VPNs for is connecting to all of my random boxes lying around my house. Um, right? I don't want to. I don't want to like walk to the basement and then upstairs and then like into the three or four rooms I've got Raspberry Pi strewn around the house just to hook a keyboard monitor up and type some command. That's annoying. Like inside my house, it's easy. I just SSH to the machines and I can manage everything. Um, but, you know, if I want to access that stuff outside the house, it becomes way harder. And I'm not going to port forward and, like, expose my, you know, my home IP to the world and allow inbound connections. That's crazy. Um, so I use a VPN solution. Um, now, my, my personal one is one that, honestly, I, I, I should have listened and done this way before I did because it's magical. Uh, if all you're looking for is to 
install one thing and have your machines magically securely tied together in a big wire guard mesh network, tail scale. Tail scale is magical. Um, now, you can turn it into like your home VPN connection. You can mark certain things as exit nodes so traffic can go out of it. As long as you can install tail scale on the, de the device, it'll work. Um, but honestly, it is the most magical, most simple thing I have set up in tech in probably a decade. I've got stuff like on cloud network providers and Raspberry Pis and home machines and in my iPhone all on a tail scale network. So if I need to access a web resource, whether it's sitting in my house or in the cloud where I turn off SSH access, I can do that. And Tailscale makes this really super convenient mesh network. It sets up the DNS for you. It's beautiful. And the best part is if you wanted to roll your own and you don't want to trust Tailscale's infrastructure, it's all open source. You can just build it yourself. I think the open source is called Headscale, uh, just FYI. Um, and, head, and the good thing about Tailscale, so it's free for 25 devices. The problem is you have to authenticate with Google. So it's, you can't really share it. Like you can't be, so unless your other people in the house have that, like they, they do want you to buy it. And unfortunately the, the purchase part of it is not the cheapest. But like I said, I think the open source is called Headscale. It does the same thing, but like with both of these, Pi VPN or Tailscale, the great thing about having a VPN home is it allows you to access all those all those internal networks without exposing them to the internet. So you're exposing literally one port to the internet. That is your VPN. You make that secure and then your Synology or any other device, your remote desktop connections, all that is 100% secure inside. Granted, your VPN and your, your router are done right. Tail scale for most people is the right answer. You have to install something. You need to install something. That's the key. Uh, Pi VPN, you do need to install on your computer, but it's it's that's just the VPN out type thing. So there's no no install solution. That's that's the holy grail. So I can put on my work laptop a no install solution or a Chrome extension. But with that said, those are two really easy solutions for the average person, anybody here. And it's a good project. If you want a good weekend project to get this going, you have a Raspberry Pi. If you don't, try with Tailscale. See it. You'll feel empowered. You'll feel good. You'll go into our group and say, hey, I did it. We want to hear that. So with that said, I don't have anything else. I think the only uncovered topic we have in this list, and this is a big one, so we probably need to make a whole episode on it, is Tor. VPNs versus Tor. What is Tor? Why would you use it? Is it safe? Is it scary? Uh, Tor, honestly, it's super cool. Super cool. Um, but, you know, don't, don't go into it with unbridled optimism that it will solve all of your problems uh, until you do some research on it first or listen to our episode on Tor, whenever that will be. Um, Hopefully that's all soon. I got. But yeah, I, oh. I have to say, we are not sponsored by Tailscale. I just like, I kept hearing about it. I kept hearing about it. And I was like, ah, it's not that good. It can't be that good. No, it's that good. I just, I love the thing. I mean, I, I have a good friend who works there, but, but again, not, again, not sponsored. Anyway, this is it for VPNs. Like I said, join us. I mean, cross our fingers. It's scheduling next week where we have, where we have the experts come on and tell us exactly what we want to hear in another interview. So if you have questions, email us, uh, what do you want to hear? Help us out with that said, like I said, we're really loving the new podcast, the new format, the new everything. So, uh, I don't want to promote anything, but tell your friends, let, let people know, uh, again, unsponsored everything else. That's it. Let's say good night and let's move on. So good night, everybody. See y'all.